Hi everyone and welcome to the week, third week of the course um, and kind of the second substantive unit that we'll be looking at. This second week we'll be looking at what's called phonetics. So phonetics, uh, if you kind of know any of your Latin roots, basically we're looking at the sounds of language. So kind of the idea for this part of the course is that we're kind of structuring it so that we're kind of building language from the bottom up. So what I mean by that is we're starting from the smallest unit in language, so kind of just individual sounds. So this week what we'll be looking at is individual sounds. In later weeks we'll be looking at how those sounds combine together. Uh, later we'll be looking at how those sounds behave together and then how they form words and how those words form sentences and, and so on and so on until we get to a bigger unit of language each week. So leading up to the midterm we'll basically be looking at the structure of language. So this first kind of uh, part of looking at a actual linguistic field we'll be looking at phonetics or the sounds of speech. So there's a few uh, concepts that we'll be looking at this week, and we'll kind of go through each of these in turn. So in this first little video, we'll be looking at the speech organs, and then in later videos, we'll be looking at what's called articulation, and then vowel distinctions, and then uh, the international phonetic alphabet, and syllables, and then tone finally. So uh, basically these concepts are all different parts of how we form sounds and how we use our kind of basic human anatomy to produce language. So this week and next week, to be honest, are typically probably the hardest parts of the course for a lot of people, not necessarily for everyone. So if you are having trouble with this week and next week, definitely be sure to send me a message, email me, and don't worry if you're having trouble. Um, I know that this is usually one of the hardest parts of the course for people. So if you're worried about your grade or anything at this part, um, really, you probably don't need to worry. The material might be tough, but I do understand that this part of the course can be a little bit difficult for some people. Okay, so moving on. Um, phonetics, as I kind of mentioned before, is the branch of linguistics that is concerned with the scientific study of speech sounds. So basically phonetics, we're looking at individual sounds of language. So we're looking at, for example, the sound s that is usually in English represented by the letter s, as opposed to a whole word like sounds. So we're looking at individual sounds rather than sounds that are grouped together to form a larger unit like a word. So in phonetics, there are kind of three main branches. Um, there's articulatory phonetics, which is how the vocal organs produce speech. So we'll look at all those vocal organs and kind of talk a little bit about how they actually produce sounds. There's acoustic phonetics, which is when we talk about the physical characteristics of speech. Um, so acoustic phonetics actually um, does use a little bit of physics. We won't get in a whole lot into acoustic phonetics here. Um, but in acoustic phonetics, you're looking at things like actual frequency, um, the intensity of sounds. And so basically acoustic phonetics, we're looking at a lot of numbers, uh, looking at, for example, sound waves, um, so acoustic phonetics is basically kind of looking at the numbers behind sound. Auditory phonetics is kind of looking at the psychology behind sound. So that's when we look at how we actually perceive sounds that are produced by other people or by ourselves. So this, uh, for this uh, 101 class, we will mostly be looking at articulatory phonetics and not as much at acoustic phonetics or, um, or auditory phonetics. So 
when we talk about articulatory phonetics, um, we talk about how we form individual sounds. So to kind of understand how we form those sounds, it's going to first be probably a good step to look at the individual speech organs. So there's a few different speech organs that are kind of important to, to producing speech. So to produce sounds, we would have a lot of trouble doing that without the subglottal system. So the lungs and the windpipe, um, you use those every time you take a breath of air, every time you breathe out, every time you produce a sound um, in speech. So the subglottal system is pretty important. However, that's not something we really look at when we're talking about how we articulate different sounds. The subglottal system is used for just about every sound, but it, um, it's not so important for the individual sounds we'll be looking at to distinguish between them. The larynx uh, actually is something that's important. Uh, so the larynx is uh, commonly known as something like the voice box, you may have heard it called. So the larynx is uh, the vocal folds. So it's this organ in your throat that can vibrate to create what is called voicing. So voicing is something we will talk about when we look at some of the individual sounds. But basically, voicing is something that is produced when your vocal cords are vibrating. The larynx is also used for what are called the glottal consonants. So these are sounds that we have in English and other languages. Um, so a sound like huh, that's commonly represented by the letter H in English. And then a sound that is called the glottal stop, which is one we'll look at a little bit later. Then there's also the supraglottal system. So this is also very important for articulation. This is where we have what's called a place of articulation and a manner of articulation. So the supraglottal system is where most of the differences will occur between the different sounds. So this is where we'll get the difference between a s and a t. So something represented usually by the letter s and something represented usually by the letter t. So this little figure, which is from the textbook, if you happen to have it, it represents the main parts of the vocal tract um, in humans. So um, the subglottal system, the lungs and the trachea, that's used to produce just about every sound we have in English. The larynx, um, which is right here, where the mouse is, that's where the vocal folds are. So those are the things that vibrate when we have voicing. And then the supraglottal system is where most of the action happens for producing the different types of sounds in English. So here we're looking a little bit closer at the supraglottal system. So the system of the vocal tract higher up than the, than the glottis. So the glottis is part of your uh, throat. So basically we're looking higher up in the vocal tract than the glottis. So there are a few different uh, organs here in the supraglottal system that are used to distinguish between sounds. So we'll look at how those organs work to produce different sounds, but the organs we'll mostly be interested in are first of all the lips. So we all know what the lips are. Um, those are used to produce a certain type of sound called labials or bilabial sounds. There's the teeth. Those are used to produce dental sounds. There's the alveolar ridge. Um, those are used to produce alveolar sounds. There's the tongue, which is used to produce a lot of different types of sounds. Um, there's the hard palate, which is used to produce palatal sounds. The oral cavity, that's used to produce um, a lot of different types of sounds. There's the velum, which is used to produce what's called a velar sound. The uvula is used to produce a uvular sound. And the pharynx is used to produce a pharyngeal sound. There's also the nasal cavity, um, which frequently we might not think of as part of the vocal tract because uh, you know, it's not part of the mouth, but there are actually a lot of sounds, even in English, that make use of the nasal cavity. So we kind of use the 
um, air system passing through both our mouth and our nose to produce sounds in English. So um, this is going to be the end of the first little video. Um, if you need to go back and review what those different organs uh, are and where they are, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, in the next couple of videos, I'll be looking at what these different um, places of articulation actually do and what kind of sounds each different place of articulation can produce. So um, if you need to take a little time to review the organs and what they are, that's fine. Um, of course, for any tests and quizzes, you can have any charts and any notes in front of you that you need to. Um, but moving on, we will be looking at actually how these different organs can produce these different sounds.